Let's start a little different today. I want to start with a story time. So you guys remember a couple days back where I talked about the topic was getting ghosted. Why do why do men and women ghost you? Y'all, I got my own ghosting story, which I think is kind of cool in this sense. You know, when I was a speaker in other environments, um, in other systems, it was more of a religious system. And I don't want to get into that conversation. That's why I'm, I'm being particular. Um, we, we come back, we'll come back to that. But when I used to be a speaker in those particular systems, whenever there was something that I was going to speak about, I would normally have to experience it or it would be a part of my life, which to me makes it more like an impartation more than just giving people information. This is like real life stuff, right? So I had my own ghosting experience. I think I made the video that morning and got ghosted that night. Now, remember I said, why do men and women ghost? So let me give you the backdrop of the story. So the backdrop of the story is this is a gentleman that I've known, I, I know him vaguely, I didn't know him like in a deep sort of way. He wanted to take me out before, this was sometime last year, and I just wasn't so sure about him. Um, so forward it to months later, I can't, because I think I met him, maybe it may have been the summertime. I mean, this is how not memorable in the sense of, of the information. So it was for me. Um, so I met him, I was kept getting a call on my phone in the last couple, last week or so from someone I didn't recognize the number, so I didn't answer the phone. That's not, not typical for me. Because I'm not a phone person in the sense where I just carry the phone around and wait for phone calls. I don't even keep my ringer on. It disturbs me. It disturbs my peace. I just check my messages or if I happen to see someone calling in. And so I called this number back. He kept saying, he said his name. I didn't even recognize him by name. I was like, yeah. But I'm practicing being, you know, more open in certain areas and certain arenas to people that would be new in that sense. So he calls, we, no, I mean, I call him, we end up in conversation, and that conversation then goes to him asking me about going out, and uh, I think he asked, was there anywhere, and I said, well, yeah, this is this cool place that I was thinking of that I wanted to go to anyway, and I had already said, when I go to this place, I gotta have a date, because this venue is off the chain. Don't at me. <laughs> I don't even want to hear, because I am not the, I don't believe in 50-50. Nope. I'm not that girl, you know, the whole argument of should the man play 50 and the woman play 50 when they go out? I don't know what they're doing, but that is not my world and not a world that I'm interested in. No, I'm old school in that sense. I am not a liberated woman, I'm a free woman. <laughs> so I'm not a part of the liberation movement in that sense. So, as in free to choose <laughs> what is best for me. So anyway, but any guy that I have gone out with, it, it's, that's not even a question because you attract who you are. So that's a part of my vibration. So that's not a thing, them asking like, who's gonna pay? If you ask that, uh, we're not going out. How about that? So anyway, back to what I was saying. I got lost y'all. <laughs> that, Cause that conversation, I'd be like, oh my goodness. Why are we even having this discussion? So, we decide where we're gonna go. But in the middle of the conversation, which I thought was so interesting, he started saying things like, well, I could come out and pick you up because I had already decided I was gonna meet him because it's so new that, you know, I picked a place where the music is there, food is there, it's a vibe. You know, if, if it's not a good connection, it still would be a good atmosphere. And I know people there and I'll still be good, right? So I was gonna meet him there. And he said, oh, well, I can pick you up. I said, no, I'm good. I'll meet you there. I mean, this, this, this is new and fresh. So I'll, I'll meet you there in that sense. Now, if it's someone that I feel a connection with, and we already have, you know, a sort of established. Now, established, I mean established within me, where I feel like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's definitely more of an official date going out. He and I were just doing a sort of connect. And yes, definitely pick me up, I'll dress up. You know, I'm gonna dress a certain way anyway if I go out. 
but I'll dress up, you can bring me home. All those things are established. For this particular thing, it was more of a meet up for me. So, and, and those you, you black, it's a meet up and you still expect the man to pay? Yes. Yes. And yes. Okay. So, because the meet up was with him having an interest in me. And so, he went, try to move things toward the house. Okay, no. Then, well, you know, we could just do things that we, we could just meet at my house. I said, uh, no, I'm not doing, I don't know you like that. I'm not doing Netflix and chill with someone that I don't even know well enough to chill with. And how did you go from asking me to dinner to asking me to your house? And then, you know, the, you know, the, then the information, the conversation started to turn. I'm, I'm bringing it in. Give me, give me, give me a little bit of time. So he then goes into some sexual implication. It was implied. And I'm like, I don't even remember all of what I said, but the response was enough for him to go, okay, 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 we'll, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay, then bye. And I, I'm in the middle of saying, in the phone clicks, I said, oh no, he didn't. <laughs> oh no, he didn't. I politely called, did you hang up on me? I know you didn't hang up on me. No, 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 I was just, da, da, da. I said, okay, sir. Now listen, this is the quickest way for something to begin and end, but I'm practicing grace, I'm practicing grace. And so, at any rate, we decided, okay, we'll talk tomorrow to establish time, location, but he's supposed to call me, he never calls. And I said, okay, I'm gonna let that go, let it go, let it go. Then as it got closer to the, towards the evening, I said, well, let me just call, just to make sure there was clarity on, you know, we're meeting up because it, it didn't have that kind of weight for me because it was we were keeping it pretty casual in my mind so I realized because I talked to him before now I realize why I didn't sort of engage with him before because he kept moving everything towards sex and I don't even know you and you don't even know me so is this the goal because if that's the goal just be forthright and say I really just want to have sex with you and then I can give him a straight answer which vibrationally speaking, it would have been no. And so, anyway, that's my I got ghosted story, but eh, got ghosted or, or got blessed, as they say. Girl, you was lucky. <laughs> you, you dodged a whatever, you know. So, but I, I don't have any harsh feelings for him. It's, and I probably would still have, for the sake of conversation for men and women, engaging more. I can still engage. I can still have the conversation and I still will be in the truth of what I've already said that I don't know you like that. Therefore, I'm not engaging with you that way. So that's that story. Now, oh, I didn't even think about these two things going together, but we were going to talk about presence as it relates to sex. And I said, the, the thing that I wanted to attach to that is an added thing is value. Because in order to be present, in any sexual activity, any sexual process, because when I talk about sex, I'm not just talking about the actual act, the intercoursing or the penetration. I'm also speaking of the energy of sex, because the energy of sex is about connecting, engaging, intercoursing. That could be in conversation, that can be in a touch, that can be in a suggestion. So if you don't have value for you, and your value system, because you decide what you think is valuable. If you don't have value for you, meaning that if your value is that you like to be seen, heard, felt, understood, and receive before giving extensively in sex with a man, and then you enter into that sexual process, which would have been something like, this guy was trying to bring me into, okay, let's go to dinner, but then flip it, now let's just come to my house and sort of just chill. Well, if my value system has already been solidified in me that this is the process that I like, you need to take me out, get to know me, meet me in a public place where I feel like I can engage with you without inhibitions and not feeling like I'm not sure where you're coming from and all those different things that come along sometimes with connecting with people that are new. Um, if I've decided that's my value system and that's how I value me, and then I turn around and do the, the exact opposite because he made a suggestion. Oh yeah, okay. 
we'll just come, I'll just come to your house because that's what he wants. Because I may lose the date. I may not have the opportunity to go out with him if I don't yield to what he wants and what he desires. Well, if you are in that love space with yourself, because self-love is more than, you know, getting your nails done, your hair did, and your toes done. All that is beautiful externally, but internally, when you set a particular bar or standard for yourself, and then you disallow that to happen based on the influence of the sexual energy that the man may be in and trying to pull you into, then that's a value. That's 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 the issue of value. Okay, so how do we actually get back to the place of value? Well, first we have to establish the promise to ourself based on the outcome that we want. What do I mean by that? So if the promise to myself is that I am not going to move or bend from my standard of what I desire until it's according to a man that vibrates at that level, no matter how good he looks, no, no matter how good he talks, then that's establishing a promise to myself that I'm keeping. And if I keep this promise to myself, then I'll begin to even attract a difference. As a matter of fact, here's the thing I will say. I was shocked that this man was able even to get into my space. Here's why, because I've been in such a flow of vibrational energy of attracting wonderful people, including men in my space. And we've been vibrating at a certain level. So I was like, wonder, hmm, where did he come? Why did he come? So. I didn't look at it like, oh, I must be putting out some bad energy. No, I just thought, why did he come? So I was curious to know because our first conversation, now that I'm remembering, actually was about business. So I had a curiosity as to what and where is this relationship supposed to go? Because here's the thing that I do, and maybe maybe this will help you. I'm not just, I'm not assuming you guys need help. This could just be y'all just, we just enjoying conversation. But in case you need a tool, a tip. I will say that one of the things that I practice is that when men come in my life, and a lot of men come in my life just because I love conversation and connection with men, so I attract them, and I think it's also a part of what I'm here for, that I can definitely say I've had a lot of powerful private conversations with men that have helped them to be powerful publicly, okay, without my name being involved in it. So one of the things that I do that when they come in my life, I ask why are they there versus assuming that it's romantic, assuming that it's sexual. Sometimes you can mess up the purpose of what they're there for when you put a label of every time someone of the opposite sex comes into your space, you think they're the, you're yours. And here's, and I will say that I learned, one of the, one of the ways I learned this practice is, was being in the church environment before um, I, I grew up in that particular environment, and that environment taught me to say things like, is this man my, is this my man or my ministry? And here's what I meant by that. My man meaning, is this someone I'm supposed to explore a deeper romantic relationship with, or is this someone that has been called into my space for me to impart, empower, listen to, encourage, la di da di da di da da okay? Okay, this video is much longer than I anticipated because when I start on this conversation, I'm so excited and I love it. I love relationship. So when we start talking about relationship, I can go on and on and on to the break of dawn. <laughs> so, so that I do not uh, over stimulate. Pun intended? Not really. So that I don't overly share. Um, we'll continue this tomorrow. All right.